Two. Okay, two, two things that are inevitable. Death and taxes. Women will say, well, menopause, that may be unavoidable as well, but scientists in Greece have actually discovered a way, they say to revive the reproductive system, you know what they call this? Ovarian rejuvenation. Hmm. It's a very unique concept. We actually have Dr. Scott Sills here, an OBGYN, who's also a fertility specialist. So we've made a lot of advances in medicine, but I certainly never expected to be able to say, take a, a woman who is 60 years of age, gone through menopause and say, oh, we're gonna reverse course here and you can have babies again. It all centers on a procedure called platelet-rich plasma. And what happens is, if you think about when you were a kid and you scuffed your knee up and as the tissue heals, there's this straw-colored fluid that comes to the surface of the skin. Well, in that material is white blood cells, platelets, growth factors, and you can fractionate those growth factors and use that to help promote growth of other cells all over the body. And it has been used in burn patients, bone grafts, uh, cardiovascular surgery. But as you said, now attention is focused on using that to make the ovary kind of perk up and grow what it was unable to provide before after menopause, which were those vital eggs. Are the, is it growing, you're growing new eggs or is this it? This is the critical point because the quality of the eggs that are being created by right. this will still be captive to the age of the patient. Right. And the age of the female is the single biggest factor that impacts reproductive outcome. Where, where are you injecting the PRP? directly into the ovary. And there's two, at least two different ways that that's been proposed. One is by laparoscopy, and then another way is like we do for IVF, actually a transvaginal ultrasound injection. You know, I'm a big believer in PRP, but this is sort of a kickstart to the engine, right? But if the engine is just flat, it may not work. So I, what I'm guessing is that may not work for everybody. I think that's true. It's certainly the fact that it's self-tissue, there's no foreign substances, there's no synthetic component to it, so the risk of allergy or infectious uh, diseases would be essentially zero for this treatment. I especially like what you said about women go through premature menopause and maybe they haven't had the opportunity yet to have children. I, I think for them, this is exciting research. It is exciting because there are people whose driver's license says that they're 29, but their ovaries are acting 59. And that's a very big struggle for, for those patients. Yeah. One of the things exciting. that I've noticed with all the women I've worked with is when they start early menopause or they're in menopause, it really impacts your self-esteem. Women tell me all the time they don't feel like a woman anymore. It doesn't matter what they look like on the outside. And so I feel like there's emotional hope also with what I, th I think you made the point I mean what's so magical about PRP it's that when you separate it from the other parts of the blood that you have these very strong powerful growth factors that can stimulate certain parts of the body and you highlighted something that's really important anyone out there thinking about PRP therapy for anything we still have such a long way to go in terms of what it can be used for. Uh, there are a lot of sham treatments still out there, but this is certainly very exciting research. Dr. Sills, thanks so much for explaining this to us. We really appreciate it.